Arguably one of the trickiest concepts to get your head around when you're learning about photography is the idea of depth of field. Now there's no shortage of videos that will show you the effects of depth of field. That a shallow depth of field makes your background and foreground all nice and blurry, and that a deeper depth of field makes your background and foreground really in focus. However, they don't actually explain what is causing this effect. They just tell you what the effect looks like. Now for me, when I learn about things, I don't just want to know what the answer is. I want to know why that is the answer so that I can better understand what is going on. So with this video, I want to not only explain what is causing depth of field, why we get depth of field, but I also want to address a couple of misconceptions and a few pieces of misinformation that a lot of videos will put out there. Now, I appreciate there's a lot of people who might be watching this video who are already familiar with the idea of depth of field. However, there's probably a few people watching this who have no idea what depth of field is at all. So let's bring you guys up to speed. Now, the name depth of field can be a little bit misleading. And remember when I was learning about photography and thinking, well, depth, I know what depth is, of, I'm pretty good with of. But the field part always made me think of field of view i.e. how wide or how high you can see in the frame. Now, width and height are two dimensions, but our field of view technically isn't two-dimensional. It's three-dimensional because we have a depth to the scene as well. Now, our depth of field is not how far into the scene we can see. It's how far into the scene is in focus. So if you think of it as depth of focus, it makes it a little bit easier to comprehend. You can get an idea of depth of field just by using your finger and your eye. If you hold your finger up in front of one eye and focus on your finger, you will notice that while you see your finger in focus, your background is blurred. Now, to explain depth of field, let's imagine we have a camera and we have lines traveling from the camera. The point in the scene where we want to grab focus, those lines need to converge on each other. The point where those lines all converge is our point of absolute focus. And the distance that those points converge away from the camera is our focus distance. So the lines will gradually get closer and closer as they reach the point of convergence. Then once they're past the subject, they're going to gradually get further and further away. So the point that all the lines are converged exactly on each other is where we have absolute pin sharp focus. But there is a tolerance as to what we perceive as being in focus or out of focus. So just because the lines might not be touching each other, they might still be close enough that to us they appear as being in focus. As they separate further and further, it becomes clear that they are out of focus. And then the more that they dissipate from each other, the more that the scene appears out of focus. So the depth of field is essentially how far from the point of convergence do the lines remain close enough together that they perceive as being in focus. If the lines converge at a very steep angle, that means they're going to close up on each other very quickly and dissipate very quickly. So there's only going to be a very short distance that the two are close enough together to seem in focus. This is what we call a shallow depth of field. If the lines converge at a much shallower angle, however, then that means that there's going to be a much greater distance where the two are close enough together. This is called having a deep depth of field. This is where we get our first misconception of depth of field. Depth of field is how far from the point of focus, front and back, do we perceive as being in focus. Depth of field is not how blurred our background and foreground are. Background and foreground blur is referred to as bokeh. Bokeh is the out of focus areas. The in focus areas are our depth of field. Now, the second misconception about depth of field. A lot of videos will tell you that there are three key factors as to what affects our depth of field. Focal length of the lens, your aperture number, and your distance to subject. Strictly speaking, that isn't quite true. Technically, there are only two factors that affect depth of field. Subject distance and the physical size of the aperture opening. Now, the physical size of your aperture opening is kind of dictated by your focal length and your F number, but they're strictly speaking not what controls and causes depth of field. It's more like they affect what affects the depth of field. You get the same argument with sensor sizes. 
So people will tell you in the whole argument between full frame and APS-C that the size of the sensor doesn't actually change the depth of field because the depth of field is controlled by the lens, not the sensor. So your sensor size doesn't directly affect depth of field, but it affects the focal length, which affects the aperture, which then controls the depth of field. Does that make sense? So it's the physical size of the aperture and the subject distance. Let me explain. So the aperture number refers to the ratio of the focal length of the lens to how wide the hole appears at the front. Thanks to Gerald Undone for clarifying that one. So a 50 millimeter focal length with an aperture of f2 will proceed to have an aperture opening of 25 millimeters. Whereas a 100 millimeter lens at f2 will proceed to have an aperture opening of 50 millimeters. Now, if we go back to the diagram of converging lines, those lines are gonna start at the camera where the edges of the aperture opening are. Which means that if we give the lens a wider aperture opening, but keep the subject at the same distance, the lines are gonna have to converge at a faster rate to be able to converge on the subject. Which means they're gonna spend less time close enough to each other to be perceived as being in focus, which means that we've got a shallower depth of field. Now let's say we had two cameras set up side by side. One using a 50 millimeter f2 and one using a 100 millimeter f4. Photographing the same subject at the same distance, okay, the two are gonna frame the picture up differently because one's at 100 millimeters versus one only being at 50. However, the 50 millimeter at f2 is going to have an aperture opening of 25 millimeters. 100 millimeter at f4 is also going to have an aperture opening of 25 millimeters which means that the lines start the same distance apart from each other and they have the same distance to travel to the subject. So they are gonna travel at the same angle. But 50 millimeters at F2 and 100 millimeters at F4 give you the same depth of field as each other. And you can check this on a depth of field calculator if you don't believe me. So it's the physical size of the aperture that dictates how far apart those lines are to begin with, not the focal length and F number. The focal length and F number do affect the size of the aperture, but it is actually the size of the aperture that controls depth of field. The other element is subject distance. Your subject distance is then going to dictate how far the light lines have to travel before they've got to cross over. So moving your camera and subject away from each other means the lines have further to travel before they need to converge. So they travel at a shallower angle. If you move your subject closer to the camera, suddenly the lines now have to travel at a much harsher angle to get converged in time. So you get a shallower depth of field. And the same applies to the background blur. So the further away your background is from your subject, the further that those lines have to travel before they hit the background, which means that they're gonna have dissipated even more. So that's it for this video. Have you just learned something new about depth of field or have I just wasted your time? Leave your thoughts and comments in the box down below. Thank you so much for stopping by and hopefully I will see you in the next video.